Uh, good morning. Just checking in again and giving you an update on the situation uh, before our cabinet meeting this morning. I've attended all the cabinet meetings for the last number of weeks, particularly in relation to the COVID-19 issue, because I feel very, very strongly that we have to ensure that the voice of the disabled is represented at cabinet level. I know it's been a very extremely difficult time for everybody and particularly for our disabled community, their families and carers. But before I go into the actual, uh, the details of my own portfolio and the disability issue, I want to offer my deepest sympathy, first of all, to the 687 people who lost their lives during the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic. But buried in those figures as well is let us, not, let us not forget that we have people with disabilities as well and their families are suffering too. We have seen the huge economic cost to society and the major rise in unemployment and also the major hits to small businesses. I, I just want to reassure people that I will continue to push for more supports for people that find themselves in an extremely difficult situation and also in relation to more supports for small businesses. These are tough and difficult times for us all and we all accept that, but it is particularly tough for people with disabilities for their families and for their carers. I want to reassure you that uh, we are working every day on the day services issues, on residential services, and also for those adults and children who have high dependency needs, because these are people that are taking a major hit as well and are suffering. Within these services, I've knocked it down to three priorities. First of all, the residential services, secondly, the day services, and then also those adults and children with extra needs. Uh, people with a disability in nursing homes is also a particular issue and I think it's important as well that we not forget those families and that's something that I will be highlighting again this morning at the Cabinet meeting because it does uh, give us an opportunity during this crisis to see the reality that we have people with disabilities who are in nursing homes who could live in the in community with the supports and with the personal assistance hours. So just to, to let you know what's going on in relation to the services, we have a huge redeployment of staff going into all the different services. We have uh, staff doing alternative duties and we also have crisis management teams uh, 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 throughout the services because it's essential that the families the person with a disability are kept up to date. And can I say, I've seen example uh, of good practice in recent days of services linking up with families, giving them supports, calling to their homes. I've seen situations where they have deaths in the family and have, the families have been off for respite. So again, I want to use this opportunity to commend all of those working in the Section 38 and Section 39 organisations. They are doing tremendous work and very, very brave work because we all accept that it's a very, very difficult time for everybody. I think the other issue is, uh, a, a very important issue is, the voice of the disabled is on the National uh, Public Health Emergency Team. And uh, I think it's essential that we uh, have these voices. And at this stage, I want to commend uh, Joanne McCarthy from the Disability Federation of Ireland for her great work. And also thank people like from the department, my own department, Kathleen McKellen, uh, Thomas Moore in the department, and in my own office. And I just want to op offer this uh, opportunity to say to you that advice and support is there, both from your own services, but also more importantly, from our team in the office. We're here, we're available to serve, and don't hesitate to contact us in, uh, over the next couple of weeks. Uh, in relation to the service providers, I just want to say highlight one other thing as well because it's important when I talked earlier on about redeployment of staff. The staff in CRC have made themselves available to support the HSE. The staff in Prosper Fingal have been doing great work. The staff in Hope Foundation Services in Cork have been doing magnificent work. And the, uh, the staff in Prosper Fingal have been reaching out to all the families with disabilities. And this kind of work is going on the ground. But I want to emphasize there is a designated person in each service that you can contact if you feel that you're not getting enough support that you need. But as I said earlier on, it's essential as well that you know that we have a team of people in here that will point you in the right direction and give you advice on the services. I also want to use this opportunity as well. We had one very sad death over, over recent days during the COVID, but it wasn't from COVID. We, we lost a very important member 
of the Cholester uh, Special Olympics team, Tony Walsh. And I just want to offer my uh, uh, sympathy to his wife Deirdre and his son Philip, who is in the Prosper Fingal services. We're absolutely really saddened by the loss of Tony, particularly this time.